Hi, it's uh, Joe from Advanced Glazings, makers of Solera and Solera Wall. Welcome to our new series, Daylighting Tech Tips for Architects. We're gonna provide practical information to help you create beautiful functional spaces with daylight and views. Now we're gonna kick things off today by just defining daylighting. Now, internally, we've always defined daylighting as the use of natural sunlight to illuminate a space. Right? In other words, it's when you use the sun instead of artificial light as your primary illumination source. Now, LEED uses the term spatial daylight autonomy. And you've achieved spatial daylight autonomy if you've achieved 300 lux of illumination for at least 50% of working hours. You'll see the term SDA 300 slash 50% to describe this achievement. Now, the more area that achieves this level of illumination, the more lead points you get, up to a maximum of three. And um, ASHRAE 90.1 and IECC require dimming or shutoff controls where sufficient natural light is present. Now, why do we care about daylighting so much? Now, there's several reasons. I mean, obviously, lead and the various energy codes are concerned with energy savings. If you can use the sun to illuminate a space, you don't need to consume the energy to power the artificial lights. LEED, ASHRAE, 90.1, IECC, daylighting guidelines are all meant to minimize energy consumption for artificial lighting when daylight is present. Another good reason is aesthetics. Buildings with full spectrum natural light are just more beautiful. Now, the most important benefit of daylighting is the impact that it has on the building occupants. We just do better when we have natural light and views, when we have that connection to the outside world. Now in our next episode, we're gonna do a deeper dive on the impacts of natural light on human performance, and it's pretty eye-opening. Look forward to seeing you soon.